Hey friends, it's Paige Evans. Thank you so much for joining me for day six of my 12 Days of Love Cut Files. Today's design is a floral heart, and here is my finished layout using my Go the Scenic Route collection with American Crafts, and all the bright colors and the florals, and it's a picture of my daughter Jane. So once again, I'm gonna show you how to have the cameo create the backing pieces. So I'm copying and pasting and moving the original off to the side. Right click, release the compound path, and delete the outer layer. Now I'm going to delete all of the spaces in between the shapes that I don't want to back with pattern papers. Eventually I'm going to back the entire heart with a piece of vellum, but right now I want to create the backing pieces. So I'm selecting everything that's remaining and I'm going to group it. Then we're going to offset it. So open the offset panel and then decrease the distance until the pieces aren't touching or overlapping. And this way you'll create the perfect size backing piece so that it has something to grab onto onto the back, which is why it's called backing a cut file. So I am going to have the distance be 0 0.040 and that way none, nothing is overlapping. Click apply and then you can just click on that pink section and delete it. That deletes all of the original pieces. So now this is the part that takes the longest, which is moving all of the pieces into areas that you can cut pattern papers to mirror what's happening here to um, the sticky mat where you're going to put all your pattern paper pieces. So I have the grid spacing at one inch and two divisions so that it's one and a half inch, or excuse me, it's half inch sections. So then I can trim pattern papers to the same size. So this part, it's just like a puzzle. I'm moving things into sections of like colors. So all of the leaves I'm gonna cut from a green paper. All of the same size flowers I'll cut from another pattern paper. So there's the heart, the floral heart that I've cut out from textured white cardstock and my sticky mat using Go the Scenic Route. And I think there's only one or two spots where I can actually use a one inch square punch. The rest of the papers I have to cut to the right size. So whether it's four by five inches or three inches square, whatever area, size area, the shape fits in Silhouette Studio, I'm going to trim pattern paper to that same size. And again, I say it's like a puzzle figuring out which papers you want to cut the shapes from. And this cut file is one of the more intricate ones where the shapes aren't the same size and it's not as easy to cut the pieces by hand. It would take a really long time, so that's why sometimes I utilize having the Cameo cut out the pieces for me. So I know I want the largest flowers to be all kinds of shades of pink, so I've gone through Go the Scenic Route and found all of the shades of pink. And then I'll also have some purple flowers. I want the leaves to be green and blue because why not? And then also some pops of yellow for the centers of the flowers. So figure out which colorways you want and then cut the pattern papers to fit those spaces. So here is what my sticky mat looks like with all of the pattern papers trimmed to the right size. And then we'll go back into Silhouette Studio so you can see. And I'm cutting it from pattern paper using a ratchet blade. That's my preferred blade. And then send it. So you can see it's going to take just under nine minutes for the Cameo to cut out all of these pieces. I think if I were to do this by hand, it would take a few hours. So definitely a time saver and a help to have technology do this part for you. So I am peeling off the pieces, the outer layers that I don't need with my palette knife, and then I'm left with the backing pieces. And I will spend the next while backing the cut file. I am going to use my favorite liquid glue, which is by Barely Art. I don't know how I went 20 years without it, but it's now my absolute favorite glue in the whole wide world. And I love that it has the 
super thin nozzle. So even on these very intricate and thin lined cut files, I can get a good amount of glue on which to add the backing pieces. So I'm just going to do the largest flowers first, starting with the center, which was a piece of yellow pattern paper, and then all of the layers of the different shades of pink. So one layer at a time, just adding a dab of glue. If you add just a dab, then the cut file will be able to lift and you'll create some dimension and shadows. You could also use foam squares to attach the backing pieces in place, or you could add spray adhesive and quickly place all of the pieces in place. One thing I particularly love about cut files is seeing them done with the different collections. So with nine of these 12 projects, my design team has created a project as well, and it's just so fun to see the different results. So here I used Go the Scenic Route and design team member Kelly Day used Turn the Page, and even though we've used the same cut file, the results are different and both lovely. So I'm really excited to see which collection you choose to use to back this cut file. You don't even have to back it. You could watercolor over it. There's so many possibilities for cut files. So let me get everything out of the way so we can have our reveal moment. Ta-da! So pretty. So here is the backed cut file, and now it's a matter of picking the background, adding the photo, and the embellishment. So I'm going to use this blue painterly background. I feel like it enhances the colors of the leaves and the photo that I want to use. I cut a heart from vellum to soften it from the background and helps make it pop. And so I am going to attach the vellum in place using my favorite glue again, never going back. So just placing a line of glue all around the outer edge of the heart. And what I love about this glue too is it doesn't leave a residue. It's basically, it basically dries see-through, which is different than the previous glue I was using. So I'm a fan. I'm going to press the vellum heart in place and it dries fairly quickly so we can continue on. So yeah that just softens up the background and helps the cut file really pop off the page and I love how this photo of Jane it's got the bright colored background to it mimics the background paper so I feel like they go really well together. I'm going to do some mixed media on the background, so I'm going to use watered down white acrylic paint and splash it in three places to create a visual triangle and it helps create interest all over the page. Once that dries, adding the heart on top. I'm not sure if it's glued down yet, but at this point I'm going to, as Missy Widden says, audition. So nothing is glued down. I'm just going to figure out which embellishments I do want to use. And since it's a floral heart, I'm going to use a lot of hearts. And since it's a floral heart, I'm going to use a lot of florals. So both of those words, floral and heart, I'm going to use a lot of. Lots of hearts, lots of flowers to continue with the main element and the main theme of this page which is this cut file. So I have some floral die cuts from Go the Scenic Route still in my stash. If you don't have this collection it is available digitally on acdigitals.com so you can print out all of the pattern papers and all of the embellishments. And I'm going to create a couple of clusters, I think three clusters. So up on the top right I'll have some flowers peeking out from behind and a little a few of them on top. And then I'll have my photo cluster with the photo and the title and some journaling. And then on the bottom left, I'm going to add another larger floral cluster with, there's a chipboard, chipboard flowers, die cut flowers, maybe even a few fussy cut flowers in the mix. And that just helps create this cascade of flowers from the top right all across the middle to the bottom left. 
and by having flowers on top and tucked underneath it just incorporates all of the elements together into the overall design so they're physically touching and it just looks like it's one seamless design. So I'm going to take a picture to refer back to on my phone if anything gets moved or displaced, especially having two rowdy kittens. They like to check out what I'm doing and sometimes their paws will move things. So I like to take a picture of my layout with my phone as I'm before I glue anything down so I can refer back to it. There is a package of enamel dots, some teeny, teeny, tiny little dots. And so I've added those into the mix in the three clusters as a finishing touch. And I'm going to write my journaling on these two label die cuts over on the right. And I always get scared as I'm about to draw these lines because I'm like, what if I mess up? But it worked out. Just drew, drew some lines by hand. They're definitely not perfectly straight, but they serve the purpose of just helping me know where to write journaling. So I'm using a blue pen to bring out all of the blues from this layout. I'm just writing a quick story about the photo of Jane at Disney World. Tucking a final piece of a die cut. These are just leaves to balance the same colored leaves on the top right. So I have the same colored leaves on the bottom left. And this is the finished layout. I love all of the texture, dimension, the colors, and the patterns, everything about this layout. So it was really fun to put together featuring day six of my 12 days of love cut files. This is the floral heart. I hope you have been enjoying this series. We're halfway through. I've got six, actually seven videos. I have a bonus video where I've used one cut file two ways coming up. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I will leave links in the description so you can pick up everything that I've used. Have a great day. See you again tomorrow.